Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks to um, Deputy Secretary for being here. Um, I want to ask just a couple of questions about our sanctions regime and potentially, you know, efforts within this body to really ramp up that, that sanctions regime. So um, you and I, I believe, discussed <coughs> last year, <coughs> excuse me, um, you know, how the sanctions on Russia after Putin's invasion of Ukraine what effect they were having on the Russian economy, what effects actually matched our expectations, and what effects didn't match our expectations. Uh, you know, we're, we're a little further down the road here. Uh, it's April of 2024. Do, do we have a good sense of how the Russian economy did in 2023 and how effective the sanctions were or were not at inhibiting Russian growth? We have a better sense now than we did um, earlier this year. And to answer your question, Senator, I think what we have found is that the Russian economy has largely transitioned to a war economy, where all the tools of production have went from building out a diversified economy that was styled for long-term growth to one that is driven by a short-term need to build as many weapons as possible to further their war aims in Ukraine. And what did their GDP grow last year? Do you know? Their GDP, I believe, grew somewhere in the neighborhood of 1% to 2%. Okay. Uh, which is, you know, frankly, at or above some of our European allies. And uh, I, I, I really do worry here, and, and I agree with you, that they've transitioned their economy to a war footing. That has its own internal momentum. And one of the things I worry, I know this isn't your area um, of focus, one of the things I worry some of my, my colleagues underappreciate is that that war footing has a certain momentum to it. And we should be trying to arrest that war footing as much as possible, not leaning into it and prolonging this thing. Because I worry that once Russia becomes an economy that only works in a time of war, that actually makes it more likely and um, that they're going to uh, show aggression now and in the future. Um, I, I want to sort of transition, and in, in, in Mr. Secretary, how aware are you of sort of, of the Repo Act, R-E-P-O, that's sort of moving through uh, this chamber, are you sort of aware broadly with its outline? Yes, I am. Okay. So one of the things that that does, and correct me if I'm, I'm wrong here, because I'm trying to sort of think through uh, my own view on it, but one of the really worrying provisions uh, is that, as I understand it, it would actually freeze the current sanctions regime that we have on Russia in place legally as an act of Congress. And so if a future president or a second Biden term wanted to change that sanctions regime, they would need an act of Congress to do so. Is that correct? I'm not certain of that provision. My understanding is that it gives the president certain authorities. I don't know that it freezes the current regime. Okay. Uh, that's that's my understanding, at least, but I think worth having a follow-up conversation, and certainly my staff will follow up as well on that particular topic. Uh, here, here's the thing that I worry about. I imagine that we have different preferences for who wins the next presidential election, uh, Mr. Secretary. But whether it's a President Biden or a President Trump, I think it's really important for the next administration to have diplomatic flexibility to negotiate what will certainly, I think, be an end to the Russia-Ukraine war, whatever end that ultimately takes. I hope to God that it doesn't last another five years. And what I worry about with the Repo Act is that we actually, if we are freezing the sanctions regime, we prevent the president from having an important tool at his disposal and actually negotiating a peaceful settlement to that conflict. Uh, let, me, let me ask just one final question on the Repo Act. Uh, as I understand it, it would give, um, it, 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 it would effectively force asset seizure uh, of all Russian assets. And I, I'm wondering, you know, ha, ha, have we done that? in a time of peace with a country that we're not directly at war with? Have we ever done something like what the Repo Act envisions? So, Senator, the one thing I am clear of is that my understanding, at least as the Senate version of the Repo Act, gives the president the ability to, doesn't require him sure. to do so. And I think part of the reason for that is because we know that the vast majority of those assets are in Europe, and we'd only want to act alongside our European allies if we did something like that. In terms of um, seizing the assets um, against a country that we're not um, engaged in hostility against, I don't know that we have done something like that at this um, at this juncture. In um, at this juncture, yeah, I appreciate that, Mr. Secretary. Uh, and with that, I, I yield the remainder of my time. Thanks for being here, and thanks for answering my questions. Thank thanks. you, uh, Senator Warnock of Georgia is recognized.